Welcome to the Story World channel. Enjoy your viewing experience. Evelyn's marital bliss seemed unbreakable as she journeyed through seven years of what she believed to be a harmonious union. However, the arrival of the eighth anniversary marked the shattering of her idyllic sandcastle of happiness. It was at a New Year's party, where Evelyn had been invited by her friend Candy, that she first encountered Bill. Amidst the boisterous revelry, laughter filled the air, and Evelyn's attention was suddenly captivated by a lone figure stationed at the bar. Unlike the rest of the merrymakers, he wore an expression devoid of joy and remained motionless, refraining from joining the festivities. Evelyn's compassionate nature compelled her to approach the despondent stranger. The sight of someone immersed in sorrow amidst the celebratory atmosphere struck her as unfair and unjust. Let's go dancing, she called out to him, hoping to lift his spirits. However, the man's initial surprise soon transformed into anger for reasons unknown. No, I am not dancing, he retorted, his response laced with a touch of indignation. Undeterred by his refusal, Evelyn took a seat beside him, gazing at him intently. The man returned her gaze, contemplating his decision. Eventually, he relented, much to Evelyn's delight. Rising from his seat, she eagerly joined him, albeit in a rather awkward manner, causing her to stumble and lean gently on his arm. Yet, to her dismay, instead of providing the support she anticipated, they found themselves tumbling together. A boisterous and merry crowd quickly rushed to their aid, assisting them back onto their feet. Filled with a mixture of embarrassment and anger, Evelyn regained her composure and harbored thoughts of expressing her displeasure towards the man. However, her ire dissipated as her gaze fell upon someone offering crutches to Bill. Crutches she had failed to notice before. Overwhelmed with a sense of shame, Evelyn muttered a half-hearted apology before making her way towards the exit. Seated on a bench outside, the young woman observed Bill gracefully exiting the bar, preparing to hail a taxi. Suddenly, his demeanor shifted, and he began swaying unsteadily, eventually collapsing onto the pavement. In an instant, Evelyn rushed to his side, immediately reaching for her phone and dialing an ambulance. Bill lay unconscious, and as the new year commenced, Evelyn found herself anxiously pacing the hospital corridor. The doctors diagnosed him with a secondary fracture, and Evelyn, being by his side, was considered his girlfriend by the surgeon. Filled with reproach, the surgeon chastised her for her perceived negligence in taking care of her boyfriend, emphasizing that his bones had only just begun to heal. Evelyn, consumed by guilt, chastised herself for persistently pestering Bill about the ill-fated dance. Just then, her phone vibrated in her pocket, and she retrieved it to find a call from Candy, her dear friend who had been searching for her. Hey dear, where are you? I've been looking for you, Candy exclaimed. Candy, do you know that guy on crutches? Evelyn inquired. Bill, of course, I've known him since high school. He had a near-fatal accident recently, but miraculously survived, Candy replied. He spends most of his time at home now. I called him and invited him to a party. I was surprised, he agreed. So where are you? Come back here and Happy New Year, Evelyn. The noise and revelry in the background of the phone call overwhelmed Evelyn, and she decided to turn off her phone. They say that the way you bid farewell to one year determines the manner in which you enter the next. Evelyn and Bill ended up spending a significant portion of the following year in the hospital. Bill received treatment and underwent rehabilitation, with Evelyn faithfully visiting him during his recovery. As time went on, Bill's initial anger towards Evelyn dissipated, and he was overjoyed to see her. Once he was discharged, they continued their relationship. Evelyn dedicated herself to caring for Bill, nurturing him like a tender child. The recovery process progressed surprisingly swiftly, leaving even the doctors amazed by the speed of his recuperation. Only Candy remained skeptical, shaking her head in disbelief. Why do you need this invalid? He will burden you for the rest of your life. How will you support yourselves, relying on his pension? 
Candy questioned. Evelyn's indignation flared. What are you talking about? How can you say that? He and I love each other, and we will make it work. I'm sure everything will be fine. We've come so far, Evelyn retorted with conviction. Candy shrugged, and before long, their once close friendship began to fade. Candy met someone new and appeared to be heading towards marriage, while Bill, no longer reliant on crutches, proposed to Evelyn, who joyfully accepted. Their wedding was a beautiful affair, though modest in scale. Candy reached out to congratulate her friend, and soon they rekindled their connection. Candy, however, never found herself walking down the aisle as her relationship with her fiancé had soured. Evelyn refrained from inquiring about the details as her own happiness consumed her thoughts. From the very beginning, Evelyn and Bill's marriage was filled with happiness. Bill, being a skilled programmer, was able to support their livelihood, bringing stability to their lives. Together, they embarked on a journey of shared dreams and aspirations, their bond growing stronger with each passing day. With Bill's growing knowledge and experience, his financial success soared year after year. Together with Evelyn, they embarked on numerous adventures, exploring the world. Three years into their marriage, their love culminated in the birth of their son. Candy, witnessing Evelyn's prosperity, once again embraced the role of a family friend. She frequently visited, occasionally staying overnight, and playfully inquired about what Bill found in Evelyn. Bill chuckled in response, saying, I couldn't resist. Evelyn wanted to marry me so fervently that she nearly broke my legs. Evelyn would chime in, brushing off the question, come on, what difference does it make now? The main thing is that we're happy, aren't we, honey? As seven years passed, Evelyn and Bill prepared to celebrate their anniversary, deliberating on the perfect venue for the occasion. They ultimately settled on their beloved karaoke bar, where they could showcase their harmonious voices that complemented each other flawlessly. On the evening of their anniversary celebration, Candy's spirits were high. She laughed uproariously, danced with fervor, and almost brought the karaoke bar to life with her vibrant energy. However, a sudden urge to step outside for some fresh air arose, and Bill, ever the gentleman, offered his assistance. Evelyn readily agreed, gesturing for them to go while she attended to their guests, refusing to leave them unattended. But as the microphone passed through the crowd, and everyone expressed a desire to witness Evelyn and Bill's do it, Evelyn noticed that her husband had yet to return. Apologizing to their guests, she embarked on a search for him. Bill was nowhere to be found. As darkness settled in, Evelyn stood on the bar's steps, her fingers dialing his number while her mind raced. A faint sound emanated from nearby, and she followed the source into the twilight shadows of the juniper bushes that enveloped the building. There, she discovered Bill standing with his back to her, pinning Candy against the wall. Candy's head tilted. She clung desperately to him, her arms appearing ghostly white amidst the darkness. Evelyn stood frozen, bewildered, as the desperate whisper escaped Candy's lips, I miss you so much. I can't, Bill uttered, exchanging a few hurried words with Candy. She nodded in response and resumed her fervent whispers. At some point, Candy glanced up and locked eyes with Evelyn. The intensity of their gaze seemed to stretch out for an eternity. When Evelyn regained her senses, she turned on her heel and walked away. She didn't return to the bar, but instead embarked on a long, aimless journey through the nocturnal cityscape. Surprisingly, Evelyn found herself devoid of tears. It was as if she had been frozen, with only her racing thoughts resembling bursting fireworks illuminating her mind. Words alone cannot convey the multitude of thoughts and emotions that were relentlessly tearing Evelyn apart. Her once beautiful sandcastle had been crumbling for an extended period, and now, before her eyes, all that remained was a pile of scattered sand. Vivid images from the past flooded her consciousness, one after another. She remembered Candy asking Bill for help in moving furniture from a store. 
She recalled coming home from work to find her husband opening the door with a peculiar smile, uttering the words, we have guests. Candy arrived just before you. The mental snapshots continued, such as the memory of Candy emerging from the bathroom, adjusting her hair. Or that night when Candy stayed at their place, engrossed in a frivolous movie with Bill until the late hours. Once again, Evelyn could envision the look in Candy's eyes, an amalgamation of anger, triumph, mockery, and victory. Yes, Candy had emerged as the victor, shattering Evelyn's once harmonious family. The prospect of joyous evenings and warm days vanished in an instant, leaving only a void, a void where Bill no longer existed. Evelyn's sobs threatened to suffocate her. How could he? What had she lacked? What was she to do now? How could she continue living? Two years had passed since that fateful night, yet Evelyn could not find it within herself to forgive her husband. They eventually divorced, a decision he did not desire. He apologized and even claimed it was her fault, citing the initial incident as an accident exacerbated by his fear of Candy revealing everything. He visited Evelyn a few more times, but eventually ceased all contact. He came to realize that the chasm that had emerged between them was insurmountable. Meanwhile, Candy seemed to have found luck in her life, marrying someone else. As for Bill, he remained alone, while Evelyn and their son departed for another city, severing all ties with their past. Life gradually improved for Evelyn as she started anew. She garnered the attention of a kind colleague who courted her, but she still hesitated to embark on a serious relationship. The wounds were still fresh and she needed time to heal. Karaoke bars held no allure for her anymore, and she developed a disdain for juniper bushes, an unwanted reminder of the painful memories she had endured.